Good afternoon, boys and girls. It's Miss Harling here giving you your homework for tonight. Today is Thursday, December 17th, 2020. I worked with my class and Mrs. Graham's class today, and we finished lesson 4.3 on multiplying with 3 and 6. So again, here is the learning target. I can multiply with the factors 3 and 6. So tonight's homework you should have at the top in the upper left hand corner, multiply with 3 and 6. On the right hand side, it should also say practice and homework, lesson 4.3. And we wrote in our agenda book that this is chapter 4 and we are doing pages 207. And then on the back of this, we will do page 207. Now, all of the problems that begin with 1 through 16 are just your multiplication facts, whether you're multiplying by 3 or if you're multiplying by 6. So I'm not going to do any of those with you. I'd like you to do them all on your own. Well, wait a minute. Let me do number 15 just so that we remember how to figure this out. Number 15, boys and girls, shows seven times six. So let's just go over that real quick. When we were learning that three and six are related to each other, we learned how we can find answers when we are multiplying larger numbers. So I don't know what seven times six is, but I know that three is related to six. So I'm gonna write, 7 times 3 instead. That's a smaller equation, and I should be able to figure that out. Well, I could make 3 groups of 7. I could make 3 rows of 7 if I wanted to make an array. I could do a number line and do 3 jumps of 7. So we know the strategies that we can use. But again, this is a smaller multiplication equation, so I should be able to figure this out. Seven times three is 21. So I double the product, oopsie. And that will help me find the answer for seven times six because six and three are related. So I double the answer I got for seven times three, 21 plus 21 is 42. So now I know what seven times six is. It is 42. So if you needed to take out a scrap sheet of paper and do that, you can. So you should be writing 42 as your final answer. So again, you should be using that strategy to help you if you don't know how to multiply some of the equations because the numbers are large. All right, moving on. I'm gonna do number, let's see. Let's do number 18. All right, 18 says, Miss Burns is buying muffins. There are six muffins in each box. Uh, if she buys five boxes, how many muffins will she buy? So we know the two numbers we're multiplying. It's pretty easy to figure this out. Mrs. Burns is buying muffins. There are six muffins in each each box, and if she buys five boxes, how many muffins will she buy? If we skip count by five on six fingers, you should know your answer. Your answer is 30. So Mrs. Burns will buy 30 muffins. Six boxes, five in each box gives me 30. Now I'm going to go to number 19. We always do that one. I always help you with the writing part of the math. All right, so for number 19, it says, explain how multiplying with 6 is like multiplying with 3. Well, I kind of just did that when I did number 15 up here. So now we're just going to write it as a sentence. We're going to talk about how they are related. 6 and 3 are related. 
period. Now again, if Miss Harley is going too fast, you know what to do. You may pause the video, catch up to whatever it is that you did not finish, and then you can hit play again so you can come back to where I am. So right now we're doing number 19, explain how multiplying with six is like multiplying with three. So six and three are related. If you divide, oops, guys can't see that, sorry. If you divide six, let me just pull out a little bit. If you divide six in half, you get three. So I'm trying to explain to you how six and three are related. So I said, if you divide six in half, you get three. That's why when you are multiplying by six and you're not sure of the answer, you should go back and multiply by three and then double it. You could even write here, I can double three to get my answers for six. I think I'm gonna add that. Double three facts to, whoops, get answers for six facts. All right, so I gave you three sentences. So first I said six and three are related. Then I said if you divide six in half, you get three. And then I also said doubling three gives you the answers for six. So please get those sentences down. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do this. Again, pause the video if I'm going too fast because I am gonna flip the page over in a few seconds. Okay, my friends, I'm moving on. If you're not ready, just pause the video. All right, let's do number one at the top. It says, Paco buys a, cart a carton of eggs. The carton has two rows of eggs. There are six eggs in each row. How many eggs are there in the carton? Well, that's pretty easy. I'm sure many of you have seen a carton of eggs in the refrigerator. If all the eggs are there, you would be multiplying. Excuse me. You have two rows, six eggs in each row gives you 12. Pretty easy, right? Two times six equals 12. I'm just going to my refrigerator. I'm going to show you the eggs that I bought. I think this is a full pack. Oh, no, it's not. But that's okay. You could make this into a multiplication equation, too. There's two rows, but there's only five in each row, so two times five would be 10. But if these two eggs were still there, it would be just like the problem on your paper. It would be six eggs, there's two rows, but there's six eggs in each row, that gives you 12. Okay, I thought that was a full carton of eggs, but nope. All right, moving on. I'm not gonna do number three, so let's go to number four. And I'm also not doing number two. Dwight made double the number of baskets in the second half of the basketball game than in the first half. He made five baskets in the first half. How many baskets did he make in the second half? All right, there's a lot of information here. So let me reread the problem. Dwight made double the number of baskets in the second half of the basketball game than in the first half. He made five baskets in the first half. So let's underline that. He made five baskets in the first half. Circle the number five and just underline that sentence. So how many baskets did he make in the second? And please circle double the number because they're basically telling us what we need to do, boys and girls. 
the number is five and it's telling us to double it. So that's all we have to do. And we can make that into a multiplication equation. Double means to use two and double the number five, which was in the word problem, because that's how many baskets he made in the first half. If we double it for the second half, how many baskets did he make? 10. All right, that one's done. Uh, let's see, let's do number five, and then number six I'm not doing. It says, in Jane's picture graph, the symbol smiley face represents two students. One row in the picture graph has eight symbols. How many students does that represent? So, very important, this smiley face represents two. You don't count this by ones, you count it by twos. So they said if you were looking at a picture graph and one row had eight smiley faces on it, and you counted by two, how many students does that represent? You cannot count these by one. I underlined, you must count them by two. So how many is that? Well, you could make a multiplication equation. You have eight smiley faces. Each smiley face is worth two. So what will we have? You may skip count. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 16 is your answer, okay? So that is your answer for number five. I am not doing number six. And then the other problems I did not do, please make sure you do them. I will go over it with you tomorrow. Boys and girls, have a good evening. I know some of you said you were gonna try to go outside and play in the snow. Please be careful. Don't get any frostbite. Don't stay out too long. Maybe when you come back in the house, you can have some hot chocolate. That sounds really delicious. All right, guys. See you later. Bye.